Hello family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Akbeza and I'm a Christian content creator based in Lagos, Nigeria. And I'm back with another episode of my faith series in which we are deep diving into Hebrews 11 and studying the great examples of faith that are contained in that chapter. So this week we are studying the faith to disobey, which is highlighted in Hebrews 11 verse 23. It says that it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. And to deep dive into that story, we will be reading Exodus 1 and Exodus 2 from verse 1 to 10. Um, the readings are quite short, so this week I'm going to go through every single verse, but sometimes I'm not able to do that. So it's always important for you to read the verses by yourself. Make sure you watch till the end of the video because I always share next week's assignments ahead so that way you can come prepared with your own points and if you have anything that stood out to you that maybe I didn't cover or maybe even something that you don't necessarily agree with, I would love to hear it in the comments. So let's get into the word. Exodus 1 says the Israelites in Egypt. These are the names of the sons of Israel, that is Jacob, who moved to Egypt with their father, each with his family. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. In all, Jacob had 70 descendants in Egypt, including Joseph, who was already there. In time, Joseph and all of his brothers died, ending that entire generation. But their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, Look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. At this point, I have to stop because if you remember what we've been studying the past few weeks um, with regards to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, the faith of the forefathers, God had prepared them ahead and given them, you know, a word to let them know that their people would be slaves, their people would suffer, and, you know, they would be oppressed, but that eventually he would reclaim them and take them back to the promised land. And so it's interesting, like, you know, I felt very relieved in seeing God's word come to pass. Like, I, I felt very encouraged in seeing God's word come to pass, even though it was not necessarily sweet to, but it just, a, it was just to me, like, a culmination of the story. Like, the faith of the father was, was not in vain. Like, from Abraham passing the word on to Isaac, passing it back on to Jacob, passing it on to Joseph, and, you know, the Israelites now being in Egypt, just had God had said, it, it really inspired me. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, so it says, so the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Pithom and Ramesses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. This agenda against men, no be today. That's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied. They are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, 
but you may let the girls live. So at this point, you know, I know that the verse in Hebrews 11 tells us that it was Moses' parents who by faith disobeyed the king's command. But it was interesting to me seeing that from even chapter 1, from the initial instruction, we see the faith to disobey in the midwives. And it's so, um, it's so, I don't know if I'll call it contradictory in what you would think of faith to be. Like faith, I, I remember even reading, I think it's in Timothy right now, where Paul is writing to Timothy and he's telling him about, you know, the importance of obeying authorities and uh, pray for the people in power, essentially, you know, and you can read that verse and think, oh, you know, you just have to go with whatever the government or the people in power are telling you to do because that is the faith thing to do. That is the Christian thing to do. That is the right thing to do. But then it's intriguing that we see the that not being afraid to disobey the king, not just because of your own selfish interest, so because of a fear of God, because of that conviction that you know that this is not in alignment with God's will and God's way. That's faith. That's faith too. That's not what you would think is faith. But you see that the midwives feared God. It says in verse 17 that the midwives feared God. And so they refused to obey the king's orders. And as a result, in verse 20, we're told that God was good to them. And the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And it, it just intrigued me. Like, so it, it wasn't even just Moses' parents, right from the midwives. You know, somebody had to disobey for God's will to prevail. So let's keep reading. Exodus 2. About this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. So very interesting. We now get into the birth of Moses, and you can see the build of that from the Hebrew midwives disobeying the king's orders and letting you know some boys live or the boys live um, Moses was born and it says that um, you know Moses's mother who saw that her child was special and kept him hidden and it was intriguing to me because it's something that I don't I, I've been wondering as I knew that I was going to be sharing this topic like you know I don't want to make it seem as if I'm encouraging disobedience and rebellion and, you know, just disregard for authority. But um, clearly there is a time when that is necessary. So how do you know when you're on the Lord's side and how do you know when you need the faith to disobey and, you know, just not go along with what culture or society is telling you or what the authorities are telling you to do and i think you know i i i, I thought it was interesting that in verse 2 we are told that she saw that he was a special baby she didn't have a vision she didn't have an angel's visitation she didn't have a prophetic word she saw 
with her two eyes that this was a special baby and it reminds me of what we learn at the very beginning that faith is the conviction it's a conviction like you know you will see you will hear you will know you there will just be a knowing in you that you know what I can't do this I can't just obey the orders that are being given because it is not in alignment with God's will and God's way so you know I do pray that the Holy Spirit will give us clarity I do pray that the Holy Spirit will give us that conviction when we need it to be able to take a stand for God and when I was discussing this in my community like the Hill Helpers community I threw it open like you know have you ever faced that need to exercise your faith to disobey and it was so interesting some of the things that were coming up especially because of you know the LGBTQ movement the abortion dialogue like so many you know topics so many things that are interesting that okay they've been legalized but are they really moral it's a long debate it's a wide debate but i would love to hear your comments you know have you ever felt the conviction um to disobey and what was that experience like for you but anyways so aside from that um you know number one there will be a conviction number two is that there will be a reward or a kind of resolution because um you know like we saw with the midwives when they disobeyed god blessed them for it and like we see with moses's mother as well she disobeyed and god blessed her for it because what are the odds that you know pharaoh's daughter is walking right in that moment what are the odds that Moses' sister is also watching and is able and courageous enough to speak up and say, hey, I can get a Hebrew woman to nurse her for you. And then she reunites Moses back with her mother and, you know, she's able to bring him up, help him to understand even who he is as, as a Hebrew, first of all. And then, you know, when he's older, he is now taken back to you know pharaoh's daughter and grows up as an egyptian or whatever so i definitely feel like yes there will be you will have reinforcement to know that you know, you made the right decision even though it's disobedient it was right so yeah interesting topic i i would love to hear your thoughts on it um but for next week we are going to be going further into moses's faith journey our anchor scripture is Hebrews 11 from verse 24 to 27. And then we will study Exodus 2, verse 11 to 25, Exodus 3, and Exodus 4 from verse 1 to 17. I'll leave it in the description box. So I'll see you next week. I love you, but never forget that Jesus loves you the most. Bye, family.